Welcome back to MSNBC. The battle for Iran's future is now being fought on the streets of Tehran, where literally tens of thousands are protesting election results. Now, the violence underscores the challenges facing the Obama administration and its diplomatic efforts in the region. Here now to talk a little bit more about this and other stories is Nicole Wallace, former White House Communications Director. Um, Nicole, we were just talking to Gavin Newsom, mayor of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. What were your thoughts on his comments, both on health care and also on gay marriage? Well, look, I admire any politician that says, you know, down the polls, I'm going to stick with my convictions. I think that was a hallmark. Sounded President, strong. President Bush and, and John McCain, and they had, you know, mixed results with that. But, but you know, I'm all for it. I think, you know, what I wonder is Ted Olson and David Boies, I think, are doing... Two super lawyers, one super Democrat, lawyers, one Republican. One represented Bush, the other represented Gore and Bush v. Gore 2000. They've joined teams and, are, and have filed a case in the federal courts, basically making a constitutional argument that by forbidding gay marriage, you are creating a second class citizenship and I'm curious if someone like the mayor would try to replicate that in the political arena. Ooh, interesting. Who would you have him go to on the Republican side? Well, That's actually interesting. You know, a little, I don't know. A little mixed marriage on that question. Right. And, 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 you know, if he faces someone like Meg Whitman or whoever the Republican is in, in the gubernatorial race, it certainly would help soften his own liberal political edges if he has a partner, you know, on the right to try to make that kind of constitutional argument on gay marriage. It's very interesting. I want to uh, move to the uh, Iran question and bring in Senator Bob Menendez. Um, of New Jersey. Senator Menendez, good to have you join us this morning, sir. Good to be with you, Carlos. Uh, good luck in your new time slot. Thank you. We're, uh, we're excited. We're off to a good start. Um, Senator Menendez, what did you make of the Iranian election? I know you sit on the Foreign Relations Committee. I know you, you pay a lot of attention to the region. What were your thoughts on not only what happened, but what happens next? Well, it's an interesting time in Iran. Uh, clearly, there is a significant part of Iranians, uh, pop, uh, Iranian population that wants both more greater personal freedoms and less confrontation to the, with the West. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the power structure in Iran, I don't think let those voices ultimately be fully counted. And I have real concerns about the results of the election. It's interesting to see that the supreme leader uh, of Iran, the person who really has the power in Iran, Ayatollah uh, Khamenei, uh, ultimately uh, just called uh, for the Guardian Council, which supervises the election, for a review. I'm not sure whether that review is going to produce anything after he called it a divine assessment, but we'll see. Uh, but I think clearly we, we would have loved to have seen a, a different result, one that was more moderating in Iran. We don't know whether that election was fully uh, transparent and honest, and that will be unfolding in the days ahead. But I think the big story uh, is that there is a significant part of Iranian society society that wants to see a change in its country. But Nicole Wallace, you and I were talking uh, yesterday and you were saying, yes, there seems like there's some good news, but you think there's another side to the story. Well, yeah, look, I, I, I hate to quote Don Rumsfeld, but I'm going to. You know, you deal with the Iran you have, not the Iran you wish you had. And the truth is that, that there may have been a little bit of wishful thinking at play here. I mean, I think in the West, we were hoping that Iran was ready for more change than they appeared to to show. And, and it's they are still a theocracy. It is still a dictatorship. And, and unfortunately, the Iran that we face is an Iran in which Ahmadinejad seems to have consolidated power, not lost his grip of that country. S Senator Menendez, um, do you think that this makes it tougher for President Obama to pursue some of the diplomatic efforts, particularly with Iran, at least in the short term? Well, I'm, look, I'm, I'm sure uh, President Obama would have liked to have seen a, a, a different result. Having said that, uh, I think he's going to continue on his parallel tracks, one that seeks diplomacy, but one that tries to move the rest of the world uh, in a way that uh, hopefully can come together to ensure that Iran doesn't achieve its nuclear capabilities that are a threat uh, not only to the region but to our interests as well. Uh, Senator Menendez, did you see the uh, or hear about the New Yorker interview with CIA Director Leon Panetta where he suggested that former Vice President Dick Cheney might like to see another attack on the U.S. in order to prove a point? Um, and if so, what did, you, uh, what did you make of the comment? I didn't get to read the article. I've seen uh, excerpts from it. Uh, and look, I, I think what uh, the CIA director was simply saying is that uh, the vice, former vice president's comments were irresponsible to suggest that this administration would do anything less than protect the national security and interests of the United States. Uh, and that continuously saying that uh, might be very well seen as a, 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 as a suggestion that the administration would do so. And I think it, it is irresponsible. And I think that's what Leon Panetta was trying to suggest. Sir Menendez, I only have about 30 seconds, but have to ask you about the governor's race in New Jersey. Looks like the incumbent governor, member of your own party, John Corzine, is in trouble. Any thoughts on uh, his opportunity either to rebound or are there larger issues in New Jersey that may have national implications? 
Uh, I think Governor Corzine and the people of New Jersey are focused on their choice between him and his opponent and have seen that he's taken on uh, the tough issues in our state, try to change the fiscal uh, uh, paradigm of the state, and one that was uh, clearly there were huge structural deficits, and he's tried to re rectify it and made tough decisions and prepared the state uh, as the first state in the nation to prepare for a, a, an economic stimulus in, in view of what was coming in the economy. People are going to understand that, uh, and at the end of the day, I think he'll be reelected. Senator Menendez, thank you so much uh, for joining us on our first show. Good to be with you.